Welcome to TLTV, joy and pleasure celebrated in wine. Today I am in the Elsass region. I'm actually in Colmar and if you remember the little intro video of TLTV, it's actually based on Colmar and I like Colmar a lot. There's a lot of good, there are a lot of good restaurants here. Of course, Elsass is famous for its wines. And that is the reason I'm here today with Sebastian Jund. And Sebastian Jund is the winemaker of uh, Maison Jund. And Maison Jund is, is, is one that's a well-known winery in the Alsatian region. And, and first of all, let's say, Sebastian, can you explain a little bit more about your family winery? Yeah, hi, uh, Remy. So, uh, Domaine Martin Jund, it's a family winery, a family domain. And uh, we, we work for, with uh, 17 hectares all around Colmar. So, so we're going to taste today some uh, wine from my region, from my winery. And then um, the, a nice way in Alsace should be that we, uh, we can propose seven different tastes with uh, seven different savage. So this is the first particularity of my region. We don't mix and we don't make some blend. We, we have uh, seven grapes and we, we made seven wine. So everyone can, can find his, his uh, favorite balance, his favorite wine for different time and different uh, people. So we're going to taste today four of them, not all of them, but four of them with a Riesling, a dry wine. Uh, we, we can see after with the Pinot Gris and the Gebers Faminer. So these three bottled uh, wine are white and we're going to taste uh, the red, the only red that we can find in Alsace with the Pinot Noir. So I made, uh, so we are, Colmar, it's uh, more a granitic area. So the soil was more light and then we made more some pure or more crystalline kind of wine. So we will see more perhaps with the Pinot Noir, it's more like a rosé. I want to talk here about the fruit, about the cebage. Okay, Sebastian, um, let, let's get started with uh, the wines. Uh, walk me through it, uh, which wines we start. I presume it will be the whites, and, and then we work our way through it and do a tasting for each one of them. Yeah, so we're going to, we start usually for, with uh, some light and dry wine, mm -hmm. for go after for more stronger and more sweeter balance. Uh, and then today we're going to, we start with a uh, with Riesling, uh, dry uh, gastronomic wine for ex by excellence. Uh, so we, the best wine for fish, for seafood, for our choucroute and Alsatian gastronomy. Uh, we will uh, continue after with the Pinot Gris and the Gavius Faminer, who have the both more sweeter balance. After, I'm not uh, the best perhaps for the too sweet wine. I prefer the, the time of food, of table. So I, I think for me that it should be better with the drier balance. Yes. And then, uh, so we're going to start with the Riesling, mm -hmm. 2013. And what was 2013 for a year? Was the, the weather, was there anything special about the year? Yeah, so this is a, a regulate year. So we, we have a, a lot of water for the, during the, the harvest, mm -hmm. September. Yes. Uh, and then we have to, to pick up the bay, the bay perhaps faster than some other year. To take only the, the nice the, the so nice. Yeah, the really select. The we have to select it. Exactly. And you lost some of your harvest, yeah. you could not pick. Yeah, so we don't have a lot of, of uh, grape, of juice, mm -hmm. but a nice quality. So the Riesling, so it's a, a wine, a more the, the best for the gastronomic time. Mm -hmm. We say it's more the, the German, a German flavor, a German tea kind so, of, so of wine. I call it structured acidity, especially the, the structure, food. Yeah, okay. the structure with the acidity. So here it's a, a young one, Riesling. Mm -hmm. So the Riesling, it should be an interesting wine and interesting. So now we are more, we, we start to have this minority flavor. Mm -hmm. So this is the end of the fruity time. Okay. So for the first two years, Mm -hmm. uh, you have more lemon, more, uh, more yellow or green lemon yes. flavor. And after we start now with uh, some more uh, minority flavor. Yes, you have the nose is very lemony, um, I, I'd say light citrus. Um, the minerality you notice it is very, very young. And just by the way that you know, we're tasting this right now outside and almost inside as well. It's around 35 degrees, it's very, very hot. 
This Riesling is, should be served, in my opinion, around like a vintage champagne, 11, 12 degrees. Would you yeah, say? exactly. It's people tend to drink Riesling and most Alsatian wines way too cold. It's something I do not understand. Sometimes you can actually take it out of the ice because 12 degrees, the, the, the actual flavors and aromas, they surface. If you drink it too cold, you taste nothing. Exactly. So that is this just for you. Try the wine at different temperatures and you'll be surprised how different it tastes. So for this, is it's very young, has a very high structured acidity. Um, I can just think in winter with the Chocut, uh, the opposite of these temperatures right now, <laughs> it is really like with nice fatty meat. You have the acidity, light acidity of the Chocut with the flavor of the meats and then, then the fat of the meat and then the acidity here cuts in the meat and maybe if the smoked sausage from Alsace, yeah. that works really well because you have the smoky fatty flavors, some of the saltiness and this just cleanses your palate, it becomes really fresh. Yeah. So I like this, this is a very, what is the price point of this particular So uh, 8 euro. Uh -huh. it, this is really enjoyable and how I would view it from my perspective. So, always do the scoring as well with the winemaker so this is uh it, it's part of the game i like this it's very fresh i would score this at around 84 points why 84 points well the price point is very honest and i always say like it's always good to buy directly from the vineyard because for eight euros this riesling is very fresh it's very crisp and you can probably keep it for at least two more years yeah so this is wonderful um let, let's move on to the next wine so after the Riesling, another sippage, famous in Atlas, uh, we will see with the Pinot Gris. Mm -hmm. So during a long time, the Pinot Gris was called Toque for, for an old history. Uh, and uh, we come from, uh, from Toque Age in mm -hmm. Hungary. And the Maréchal Schwendi uh, take this uh, grape and want to, to plant in Alsace, but it, uh, but it takes some Burgundy grape uh -huh. called uh, Pinot Bureau. But for a long time, to, to 2004, when the, the, the Hungary come in, in Europe, mm -hmm. we used the, the name of, uh, of Toque. Okay. So for the whole people in, uh, in, uh, in Alsace, we have to talk about the Toque more than Pinot Gris. Okay. Toque. Okay. Yeah. And uh, for this uh, wine, most of the time, it's a uh, more desert time or in an, an aperitif wine mm -hmm. because we can find some sugarless. Okay. And uh, perhaps the problem, but the nice way in Alsace, you can find a lot of different Pinot Gris with a lot of different balance. So I don't like the too sweet wine. I don't want mm -hmm. to make a too sweet Pinot Gris. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to start to, to taste my new Pinot Gris from mm -hmm. the, new, the last uh, harvest. Okay. And uh, we have 12, 12 uh, grams of sugar. So the second most important cepage in Alsace, the Pinot Gris most of the time uh, have a sweet balance. Mm -hmm. So after for my opinion, my taste, only my taste, um, it should be better at table to drink uh, drier wine, drier balance. Yeah. Um, and then, the Pinot Gris, most of the time for me, uh, should be better to drink it uh, in aperitif mm -hmm. or uh, in dessert. It depends on the balance. And then, uh, but I like to to, to show different uh, another view of this cepage, mm -hmm. of this wine, with a not too sweet balance, um, for for have a nice for find some nice association uh, at uh, at table. So it's more. It's more uh, earthy uh, tasting, earthy. earthy tasting. So I like if, earthy if, a lot. Yes, <laughs> if the wrestling should be the best for fish and seafood, yes, the Pinot Gris should be very nice with uh, some food plate with more cream sauce, more, mm -hmm. more mushroom, okay. uh, with the white meat, and uh, with the more, more earthy uh, vegetables. Okay, I can't wait. See, see, as you know, when you've watched many of these episodes, I love earthiness. I love fungi. Yeah, so, so when you welcome mention with that, the, uh, this should be let's good get with started. The, with the <laughs> peanut paste. Thank you. So let's, let's see what we have there. This is where it's 
the rubber meets the road. The nose is very interesting. There's a light, uh, I, I almost call it like a cheesy earthiness. So like, like you know, like a cheek cellar. Yeah. But still, this, this is 2013 vintage? Yeah, it's a new wine, so I don't have a lot of wine yards in uh, Pinot Gris, in the three okay. Pinot with the white, gris and black. And then I have to, to sell, this is the first one that I sell. Okay, and this is 12.5% volume alcohol and the price point for this particular wine? Uh, 8 and 50 euro. Okay, 8 euro 50? Yeah. So, so let's see what we have. It's like, I call them structured sugar. They, they're still very fresh, still very young. Could yeah. do with a little bit more time. Yeah, you have to. For, so I can't ma maybe make it for weight for, for this wine, mm -hmm. but I think every wine should be better one year. After. Yes, this needs to sleep a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, as the acidity that you still have there is, is still very present. You, you get the sugars, they, they, are, they have a really nice warm structure. Uh, but I really like the nose. The nose is phenomenal. Drink this in one year. So put it, bring it home, forget about oh, it, yeah. and, and drink it in 12 months. And that is something as well, I think, for, for the price point as well. This 85 point, this is my favorite so far. Why? Because I can see the potential in this in 12 to 18 months when you drink it. And it, it's funny because in Switzerland, it's something I say all the time, people drink wines too young. They purchase a bottle and you should actually buy your, your wine, that's a uh, quota for the year and forget about it and leave it at least one to two years and have like a rolling cellar where you just always have bottles in your cellar. First of all, it's cheaper, you save yourself some money. And on the other hand, wine needs time. You cannot rush this, this is just oh, nature. Right. It's, it, these are already organic wines, give them time. Um, and then serve them at the right temperature. Um, also, as well, always do the right glasses. And as you can see here, these glasses as well, for white wine, they are fine. Why? Because they have more opening. In the Elsass, you see, unfortunately, a lot of these very thin wine glasses. And especially with a wine like, like the Pinot here, it's like, it closes off. It, you need the aromas to develop. Yeah. And if you have the wine glass that is like this, it's something like the old fashioned champagne glasses almost. It's a catastrophe because it closes the wine. So therefore, so this is much better. <laughs> so th this is something I'd enjoy. I'd say, let's move on to so, the third wine. So it's exactly the, what, uh, what you say, you have to, you need to wait six, one year more. Because mm -hmm. when, uh, when uh, the wine should be young like this, you can, you can taste uh, separately the acidity, alcohol mm -hmm. and sugar. Less. They are not so, combined, yeah. yes. In few months, mm -hmm. few years, it should be better for this. And if you have exactly the same um, menstruation, mm -hmm. one year later, you don't have exactly the same taste. So now it tastes, for me, too sweet. Yes. And then in you know, six and one year later, mm -hmm. you don't have ex exactly the same tasting. Mm -hmm. And it should be better. Now it should be young like this, it should be perhaps better for yes. in aperitif. And in a few months, mm -hmm. one year, you should you can you can find some better association for with food. Absolutely. So let's move on to the next wine. But I'd say that nose is really good. So now we go to the third wine and our third wine, Sebastian, which one is that? So this is the Gewürz Traminer. So Gewürz in German means spicy. And Traminer, this is the name of uh, the of the orig original grape who come from Italy. Mm -hmm. So in the north of Italy, in the region of Sud Tyrol, yes. you have a town called Traminer. Mm -hmm. And the German people take this grape and come in Alsace for and in Germany for plant mm -hmm. this cepage and make an association with another cepage uh, called Klebner mm -hmm. for made a spicy Traminer, a Gebirs yes. Traminer. Like the Pinot Gris in, in Alsace, this is the sweet balance, the sweeter balance. Yes. A lot of women tend to go for that. That is not yeah. prejudiced in any way, but if you go somewhere with people that are non-wine drinkers, let, let's put it like this, non-wine drinkers tend to really like, and for English speaking people, Gewürztramina is a very difficult word. word. Gewürztramina, Gewürztramina. Practice that after you've had a few glasses of wine. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, for my interpretation of, of uh, this page of the Gewürztraminer, 
Uh, I like to, to talk more about the gift than the, the sugar. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't want to make a too sweet wine for this one. I want to make a, a sweet balance sugar. So we have like the like the, the Pinot Gris before, 12 grams of sugar less, mm -hmm. uh, 30.5 uh, in degrees of alcohol. Okay. And um, I like the way to have this uh, spicy flavor. So the best time, perhaps sure with uh, our European food, mm -hmm. more we drink it more uh, in aperitif mm -hmm. with a strong cheese. The best association should be with yes. our Munster cheese in Alsace. Munster cheese, fantastic. Uh, Munster cheese, give us some minutes. Perfect. Should be the perfect <laughs> and easier association. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like the way to to talk about the, this gibbets with the spice food like Indian or Thai food. Mm -hmm. You should find some very nice uh, association if you don't have. Too, uh, a too sweet balance. Yes. I'm, I'm curious because this was a Tourotstamina with a lot less sugar than the normal Tourotstamina. And that is the personal winemaking style of Sebastian. Yeah. And this is like always like when people say, I like Gewürztramin or I like Chardonnay. It's actually the winemaker that puts their signature. It's like um, I always say, when, when you give one liter of paint to Rembrandt and one to Van Gogh, you end up with different paintings. And this is the one thing as well, when you give the same grapes to different winemakers, Sebastian puts his own signature. And this is where wine is, is exciting, and this is where the art comes in. So, I'm not the huge fan of Gewürztramine because of the sugars, and I like what Sebastian just said, because I like structured acidity. Acidity with a beautiful structure, and if you can combine it with some of the oriental foods, wonderful. This is the most important thing, the, the acidity for the mm -hmm. structure of the white wine. We build our wine with the, with the acidity of the year, of the cepage, mm -hmm. but every harvest we have to know the balance of the temperature. And this is, um, what year is this? This is 2013 as well? 2013, yeah. 2013, 14.0, 13 no, 13.5% alcohol, yeah. volume, yeah. and uh, you already have this typical Gewürztraminer nose. It's a nose that um, everybody seems to enjoy very much. I like it as well. It screams of like like something like the Far East. It's like a mystery. It's it's like this this wonderful like raisins. You know, as a child when you got the sweets, the raisins. This, yeah. this smells exactly like that. Um, and and some 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 very distant petrol elements, very far away. I like the bite, but it's not it's it's not a bite, but it's like a, a pleasant acidity as some of the which would be cool to actually have another Gewürztraminer to, to see the difference. Yeah. But I like the reduced sugar. You see the acidity because especially if you for example if you take a Thai curry with coconut, you need some acidity to make space from the coconut, spell okay. the spices, taste the spices. Yeah. So I like the way to to spend a lot of time with my friend for me more at table mm -hmm. and I like to I like the way to drink more than two or three glass so I, agree. I don't <laughs> I, I don't uh, I don't that's why I don't like the too sweet balance so mm -hmm. because sometimes most of the time with this kind of sweeter balance after two glass it should be difficult to drink one more mm -hmm. that is very true because it, it kind of fills you up as well and Sometimes it's, it's, it's something when there's too much sugar, it loses context, as you said correctly. Yeah, the acidity yeah. is like when you build a building, they are like, you know, when you see the skyscrapers in America, they are like the, the metal beams and the rest of the building hangs on to the acidity. And acidity does that. And it's not a bad thing. Some people are acid, that is bad. No, it, it actually gives the wine personality, provided it is, inf it, it, it's like, it folds itself out correctly and with, 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 with structure. That is the most important thing. And this here, I like this a lot. First of all, the nose is, it's like, it, it, it's, it's a good, normal Gewürztraminer nose, but with, with less of the sugars coming at you. I'm sipping this, this is my only sip, but this is really very enjoyable and from my perspective I give this 
88. Why 88? Because this is one I didn't even ask for the price. What is the price? Uh, price? Nine uh, euro. For nine euros, this is a steal. I mean, come on, nine euros to find a wine with some aging potential, uh, not a Gewürztraminer that is has over sugars. These sugars are very pleasant. In my opinion, I probably say this too much, but it could do with a little bit more time. Um, the drinking temperature now is almost right, but it's so warm here. Um, maybe you can see the condensation on the bottles. It's, it's probably inside in almost 30 degrees. But this is almost has a summer character. Um, if you close your eyes and just smell this, you could be in a different country. You don't think necessarily of Elsa's probably in Tramina in, in the Tyrol area. Yeah. But it's wonderful. So I'm excited now because now we move on to the next wine. And this is, um, as you've watched the Traubenliebe videos, I am a big fan of Pinot Noir. Um, my holy grail of Pinot Noir is Gevray Chambertin. Yeah. I love Gevray Chambertin. I did a review of. Uh, of some of the uh, Premier Cru wines this week. And Elsass naturally makes a very different Pinot Noir, as Pinot Noir is a grape that is, is very flexible. It's, it's one of the most difficult grapes to grow. Mm. Pinot Noir, I always call it the diva of grapes because it's very sensitive, you know, if there's too much wind, if it's too cold, if it's too warm. Pinot Noir, is, is, it shows the talent of the winemaker in the sense that it's, it's a tough grape to make or to grow. So that is the one I'm very curious about, Sebastian. So bad. Uh, let's go. Yeah. We're going to, to taste my Pinot Noir. So my young Pinot Noir, 42, like the Pinot Gris. Um, so for me, I want to make a more a fruity one, a light and rose, more like a rosy Pinot mm -hmm. Noir, because um, my uh, one yards are more in a, in a granitic area. Mm -hmm. And for me, the stronger, uh, Pinot Noir, like in Burgundy, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you need to have some limestone, so yes. clay soil area. Mm -hmm. And then you can find some kind of soil uh, of limestone or clay soil area in Alsace, but it's not uh, in my in my uh, region of Colmar. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, I have a light structure, and I can use only barrels when every five or six years, so I prefer to have. A a fruity and light mm -hmm. red wine. So, so what barrels do you use? Uh, I use some uh, French barrels, but um, a demi uh, bouille. Mm -hmm. So for five uh, thousand uh, liters. Yes. For don't, I don't want to to have this too strong um, taste of woody taste. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the the, the kirsch, the the, sorry, the red yes. fruit, yes. more than the, the wood. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice acidity, it's young. Should be better perhaps, sure, in six months, one year later. Yes. But it's a more a summer, uh, summer wine. Okay. You can already see the color. I will show you this in a second. Because it is extremely light. Um, this, this is the color, I'll just walk to the camera and show you that. Because it has such a beautiful light, it, it, it is not, yeah, I wouldn't call it, it's not a rosé color, but it's... No, it's not a rosé color, but uh, a light and fruity color, mm -hmm. like, the, like the wine. It, it screams sunshine, so this is something, if you would think of a red wine from Alsace and you could stereotype it, this would be probably the color a lot of people think. Yeah. So in Alsace, most of the time we, we don't have the, the best area, the best soil for made stronger wine. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and in Alsace, we most of the time we made some uh, red, like we made the the, the white. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly the opposite, perhaps, of the Burgundy style. Yes. They made the white like the red. Yes. yes. But in Alsace, we we are more uh, we have more uh, experience with the white wine, and we made more the, this cepage of Pinot Noir like a red. Okay. And this is as well the granite soil, but probably. You'll notice the difference as it will be lighter. Yeah. So with the granite uh, soil, we have more so light structure, mm -hmm. more straight on structure. It should be the best thing for, for keep a nice fruit. Okay. That's... The nose is very fresh. Um, maybe sour cherries um, is something that comes to mind when you smell this. 
but as Sebastian said as well, it, it's better to wait for this a little bit longer. It's, 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 it's not completely pret a boire yet, you can drink it, but if you wait six to nine months longer, it's probably better, and I have not tasted it yet, but from the nose, you can see the cherries are still growing. Yeah. And funny, this might just be me, but there's almost an apple sense to the nose. Yeah. Do, you, do you get the apple? Yeah. yeah. If, if, you, if you have apple wine, if you're, for example, in Germany, Apfelwein in, 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 in Frankfurt, there's like an apple apple type of aroma to this, and that, that comes as well from the fermentation, it, it's a side process of that. Yeah. Interesting, that's where you see as well, it, it still um, needs a little bit more time. The tannins are very accessible, they're still present. It's extremely fresh. So this is something probably you want to drink um, at the same temperature as the whites, or maybe one degree yeah. warmer. So um, for, with this acidity, it should be better colder yes. than uh, warm. But uh, that, that, uh, you, you said before that we, can, we have to wait. Mm -hmm. We have to wait six, one year more. It's going to be interesting to see. You probably get some of the sugars developing more, um, the acidity going down a little yeah. bit, and you get more the typical Pinot Noir sherry. Yeah. So a cherry, but not sherry, we're not in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, but this again has potential. Right now, I would I would call this like 83. I would give it a score, and I think if you taste this in one year, it, it, it probably high 80s because it, this has this freshness, and I call this a summer red. Exactly. And you get, this is something actually with this temperature, it's 35 degrees, probably almost 40 right now. It, it's wonderful. So th this is where you can see as well from a region, and that's where I always keep saying, wine should be fun. And, and this is the okay. thing. I met Sebastian as I, as I was staying in Colmar, and we, we got talking, I said, listen, I do a wine blog. Uh, let's get talking quickly. And, and he, I had the luxury of him taking the time because he, he's in the business as well, he runs the winery, he makes the wines, they produce over 40,000 bottles a year, on probably one of the most warm days in the year. Ah, yeah. uh, so, <laughs> the warmest so, year, week. Yes, the warmest <laughs> week of the year. Yeah. And I, do, I just want to say thank you very much, Sebastian, for your time, letting, letting me taste your wines. I hope for the people watching, um, I will be recording the German version of this as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, you learned something more. When you're in Elsass, come to Colmar. It's, 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 first of all, it's a beautiful city. Uh, gastronomically, there are many cool things to, to discover and learn. And, and, and come here as well to, 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 the, to, the, wine, to the winery and, and meet Sebastian and, and try the wines we've tasted. Yeah. I will post the address in the video as well and in the credits it will be there as well. And, and basically go out there, try different wines. I'm going to close this episode and thank you again very much, Sebastian. With a great pleasure. I spent a nice time with yeah. you, Remy. And uh, this is exactly the, the way that I like with the wine. Exchange with the people, mm -hmm. understand new people, explain my work, my family, my uh, region. And uh, I'm sure that you have to come in Alsace to find exactly the wine that you, you, can, you like, you, the wine that you prefer, mm -hmm. perhaps to my winery, but you have to taste different winemakers for see different interpretation of the of the wine. Of Absolutely. The, of, the, of the region of uh, Alsace. Absolutely. So as always, um, I close this off with a Pinot Noir uh, together with Sebastian. As always, I always believe in the holy trinity, I call it. Good food, phenomenal wines, wonderful people. Pair them together so they match and have wonderful conversations whilst enjoying wine. Thank you for watching and cheers. Merci cheers. Sebastian. Ciao.